Hello everyone and welcome back to Dream Daddy. Hope you're all doing well. I'm doing quite well myself. Today we're going to go on a date with Damien. The intro uh, audio for this actually got uh, corrupted. The audio for the rest of it is actually perfect so I don't know why the intro bit got corrupted but uh, this is me post editing doing this little intro. So we're going to go ahead. If you guys want to see me go on a date with Matt or Brian, please let me know in the comments. I don't plan on recording them unless you guys specifically tell me in the comments. But other than that, let's go ahead and get started. Alright guys. Ever since we had the picnic in the graveyard, Damien and I have been spending a lot of time together. We spent our nighttime strolls pretty regularly. He was so impressed with the first letter I wrote him that he insisted we only communicate by post instead of through that book. I initially protested, but he gave me one of his old signet rings to use as a seal for my letters, and I just couldn't say no. Hang it with that got that again? Please, Amanda. You know his name. And yes. Huh? Be honest with me here, Pops. Is he actually a vampire? I remember you inviting him into our house at that one time and I've seen the Lost Boys and honestly would prefer trying to see if he could have walked through the threshold of our home under his own power. Yes, Amanda. I have become Damien's familiar. I am compelled under his course. I'm sorry, sweetie. Aww. Turn into a bat. I don't think... Aww. What's the point of being a vampire if you can't turn into a bat? Well, okay, I'm off. Hmm. Are you taking the car or are you flying off into the night on the leathery wings of a bat? One of those. Well, I mean, can you throw away the garlic bread that's in the freezer so I don't die? That'd be great. I'm keeping it there as insurance. You understand, right? That's my girl. <laughs> Damien and I walk along the water's edge, chatting. Damien's cape, I mean his cloak. He hates when people call it a cape. Damien's cloak floors behind him in the breeze. This is going to seem like a silly question, but why do goths wear black? Gothic subculture has always been associated with death, so it would make sense that the styles for anyone would be greatly influenced by mourning. Huh. Interesting enough, though was that in the Victorian era, Queen Victoria herself mourned the death of her late husband for ten whole years, wearing black for the rest of her life. If that's not goth, I don't know what is. I have another question. Hmm. Go ahead. How are you so comfortable with death? You mentioned the graveyard that it helps you appreciate your life or something. Hmm. Ah. I've experienced several losses over the course of my life, and I truly believe that the only manageable way to cope with it is to accept that death is simply a part of living. Ah. It's a single universal truth for every human who has ever lived. I'm going to die, you're going to die, and life carries on without us. That's very depressing. Doesn't that make you feel scared? Not at all. Without the advances of modern science, death was everywhere in the Victorian era, and yet funerals were major social functions. Mm. Victorians were obsessed with mementos of their loved ones, even going as far as to take elaborately staged photography of their death relatives. The minute of mourning was so complex that there were set periods of grieving that were deemed acceptable based on who in your life had passed. Now, we don't have any of that. If you lose someone, you end up feeling lost yourself because we have no modern equivalent of those formalities. We need to allow ourselves time to grieve, to feel those lost fully, but not to fully accept it, or fully allow it to consume us. So no, I'm not afraid of death. I believe it's a waste to spend your life dreading the end of it. The time we have here is brief and fleeting, and occasionally cruel. But is that the all times precious? To stare death in the face and live despite of that? I think it's a noble existence. Let's save the morning for the dead. Wow, that's kind of beautiful. I can see the moonlight in the bay glint off Damien's eyes. He smiles. We turn to the harbour and watch ships pass, breathing in the salty sea air. I look at Damien again and I can't help but feel entranced by his charm, his mystery. I find everything about him so fascinating. I lean close to Damien, closing my eyes as I do so. Huh. I'm so sorry. I have to take this. Damien steps away for me to answer his phone. Oh no, hope it isn't Lucian again. After speaking in hushed tones for a few moments, Damien returns to me. Everyone okay? What? There's an emergency. Lucian? Huh. No, thankfully. But I must take my leave. Oh, okay. Is there anything I can do to help? Hmm. Huh. Daz, do you have to stick together, right? You know it. Then come. There isn't time to waste. After a short drive in silence, we have a rundown building on the outskirts of town. Where are we? It's better if I just show you. I push the sturdy heavy door and find myself in a dimly lit waiting room. A few wiggly chairs line the walls and there doesn't seem to be anyone behind the front desk. There are a few paintings and pictures on the wall, but they're so nondescript I'm still unsure what kind of place this, is, this ah. even is. Wait here a moment. I'll be right back. Damien walks off down the corridor, his boot heels echoing through the halls of this seemingly empty building. This is echo howls echo from someplace I can't see, and there's a faint scratching sound, like claws on tile? I cautiously peek down the hall and find stall after stall of scared looking dogs. A few of them notice me and skitter up to the chalk line fence, sticking their nose through the sniff of the air. 
What have I gotten myself into? Suddenly, the lights shut off. I panic. I'm not sure where I am or how to get out. I stumble through darkness, my reading getting heavier and heavier. Damien? The lights finally turn back on. Hey, sailor. Mary, what are you doing here? Come on. You want here for the fight club? I, uh, I don't want to get punched in the face. Mm. Great, because this is an animal shelter. A what? Ah. We take care of stray animals, and then we people adopt the stray animals. Didn't you see the pets when you walked in? Oh, I just... Sorry, I didn't really expect to see you volunteer in an animal shelter. Ugh. Wow. Okay, kid. Way to put me in a box. Dames, you hear this baloney? Just one moment. Turn it cracks and the door bursts open, appearing from the shadows I see. Damien? Oh my god! What? 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 What is this? Um, hey, it's Damien. He looks completely different. No cloak, no Victorian or clothing, no makeup. I wasn't planning to share this side of me until much later, but I'm not as god as you think. Oh, no. I, uh, I'm a systems administrator for the IT department of a realty company. I wear tennis shoes to work and I listen to Bruce Springsteen. I enjoy going to the hardware store and looking for storage solutions. And I volunteer at this animal shelter in my spare time. I'm boring. That's actually kind of cute. I'm fascinated with Victorian history and the god lifestyle. That much is true. It's just not all that I am. I need you to know that. Oh, I, uh... Mm. Hate to kill the moment here, but there's some pressing business that needs attending to. Oh, my. Oh, right. It's Duchess Cordelia. Again. Who's Duchess Cordelia? Oh. She's one of the pops, gets out all the time. She somehow learned to open doors, and now she's unstoppable. Mm. When did she get out? This morning, I went to go sing sh sea shanties to the cats, and when I came back, she had already bolted. I have to stay here with the pets, so I need you to go to, to go find her and go and find her. Of course. Where could she be? Come on. She always ends up running to the same places. Here, let me draw you a map. Mary starts scribbling on the back of a pet adoption form. Ah. She's very smart. Rootless, even. You need to stay on your toes and get her back by sundown, or else she turns into a werewolf and starts eating people. What? You're a perfect little peach, Delphron. Hey. We just don't want her to be stuck outside when it's cold. Oh. I'll grab some treats and we can hit the road. Dave and I look over the map Mary created for us. Um. <laughs> oh man, I'm Nerd's House. Wait, where are we? Oh, I'm the Nerd's House. Uh, Nerd's House. Oh, so we're in the say Mary's Sick Pad and Coffee Dad. Uh, Kale. <laughs> Smalls. Dames. Uh, so this is obviously Damien's house, this is Joseph's, my house, Matt's house, Craig's house, Mario Patel, I want to say Hugo's house. Uh, who's other nerd's house? Maybe Brian? Who's Smalls? At least you're not of the nerd's house. Looks like you're moving up in the picking out, picking order. Congrats, kiddo. Where should we head first? Uh, let's go to the cul-de-sac. I feel like that should be pretty easy to search. We can ask the dads and whatever. Damien and I exit the parking lot and start driving down toward town. Look over to him, he seems concerned. It shouldn't be too hard to find the Duchess, right? She's a pretty big pup. Mary wasn't kidding when she said the dog was smart. One time she correctly guessed the winner of the Kentucky Derby. It was a really great year for Bark Bark Bark. Hmm, I don't know. What do you think our odds are, Delphon? Um, bad and all hope ye who enter here. But look upon God's creation, rich with the horror of what he hath forsaken. And as empty and devils are all here. Oh, he really liked that. Okay. Nice. I thought that would cheer you up. Let's just hope for the best. We got this. Oh, Brian. We drive to the cul-de-sac and everything seems pretty, pretty normal. It looks like Brian's doing some yard work. Go into Brian's driveway and hop out. Aww. Hey, don't step on the grass. I just mowed. <laughs> I don't even know what the vice is. Have you seen any unusual activity in the area today? Uh. Aside from your underwater lawn. Oh, here we go. How dare you? I take my long care very seriously. Delphron, please. You haven't seen a dog run through here, have you? Okay. Well, a little while ago I heard Maxwell barking or something. But when it came outside my garden had been torn to shreds. It's gonna take forever to re-till the soil. Hmm, that could be a dog or a rather feisty, feisty raccoon. Whatever it was, it must have been hungry. Ate all of my tomatoes. I'm very sorry to hear about your garden. If you need assistance restoring it to its former glory, please don't hesitate to contact me. Ah. Will do, buddy. 
Good luck finding that dog. Oh, no. Hmm. She's probably still hungry. What if she's looking for more food elsewhere? Um, if she's looking for more food, then I say the coffee spoon then? Because maybe she was here and ran this way. So where are we? So, um, so obviously, this is the pet store, right? So she ran this way up and popped into the coffee spoon. So maybe then we can go to the softball field. And then the bayside, maybe? Okay, so let's go to the coffee spoon. We pack up from the Matt's coffee shop and walk inside. It seems like a slow day. Matt sits behind the counter reading a book. Hey, Matt. Hey. Didn't expect to see you two here today. What's up? Huh. Have you seen any strange dogs around? Actually, yeah. I caught one digging through the trash earlier. Ran away when I tried to get closer, though. Did you see what direction it ran in? Matt thinks for a second. Might have been running east, I think. That pup tortured three pounds of old right said banana bread. Want to take some for the road? Just in case. Sure. Sure thing. Mac packages up a slice. Thanks for the slice. The road slice. This banana bread is going to be so good. I think he meant to give it to you for the dog. Right. I meant it's going to be so good for the dog to eat. I feel like we're on the right track. You think? If we keep this up, we'll find the Duchess in no time. Hey, if you like dogs so much, why don't you have any? Lucian is severely allergic. I wouldn't put him through that. Same, I'm allergic to dogs too. But there's still dogs in my life, so I'm grateful for that. There's about to be one more dog in your life, buddy. Splendid attitude. Let's not waste any more time. Verily. Uh, I said the softball field next, right? We got to the softball field. It looks like Craig's team is practicing. I wonder if any of the kids saw something. Craig spots us and jogs over. Softball bass slung over his shoulder. Oh. Hey, bros. What's up? Craig, you wouldn't happen to have seen a dog around here, have you? We escaped from the Adam the shelter and we're trying to locate her. Hmm. hmm, I don't think so. Maybe one of the girls saw something. Oh. Girls? Hi, Amanda's dad. Hi, Lucien's dad. We have names. Girls, have you seen any dogs around? There was a big dog here earlier. She ran off a while ago, though. I don't think she had known her, but I really wanted to play. We tried to play fetch with her, but she just took the softball and ran. I think she ate it, actually. She was a lot of dog. Oh. Here, taking her a softball. Might come in handy later. Hmm. Many thanks, Craig. Ooh, I don't know where to go now. So she must have, like, left the softball field. I don't think she would have gone to the aquarium, so... Maybe Bayside? We arrived back at Bayside. Just like old times, eh? Oh. I remember if it was yesterday. I mean, earlier today. So what do you think? Any side of the pooch? Hmm. None yet, although who knows if we machine it onto any one of these ships. The Duchess would do that. I guess we're gonna run into Joseph here. Went a bit of pastor to know how to navigate in rough seas without a compass. Very smart. Pops! Oh, Amanda! Damien, I turn to see my daughter. Amanda, what were you doing here? Huh? Did you think I just stayed inside all day vegging out on the couch and watching TV? Oh, sorry. What are you doing? I'm heading home to veg out on the couch and watch TV. Uh. Had to get a burrito first. <laughs> Young miss, have you seen a dog around here? Yes. Oh, you bet. I saw a Pomeranian with a bow around his neck. I saw a big old Doberman named Henry. There was a stroller full of Yorkies, a Greyhound, a Golden Retriever. Did you see a Mastiff anywhere? Hmm, no dice. I would definitely have remember that. I gotta run though. This burrito has about 10 minutes before the cheese breaks down to molecular structure of the tortilla and makes it all soggy. Tor tortilla? Tortilla? And makes it all soggy, so you understand. I do? Hmm. Of course. Have a lovely evening, Miss Sainer. <laughs> Matt said the Duchess went east from the coffee shop, but there's no sign of her here. I suppose you need to go. Uh, not so southeast? I fear the hours are growing short. We might expect Hasty for to find the Duchess by sundown. Dave's looking more stressed out by the minute. I think he got some enlightened mood. Um, how many gods does it take to screen light bulb? I don't know. How many? One. Gods are very capable, especially when looking for a dog. Oh, that's kind of cute. I like that one. I keep reading Dave's directions from the map as we drive around town. Uh, I guess if you said east, so not so east would be aquarium because obviously it's not back at the shelter. So, aquarium? Dave and I stop by the aquarium. Everything looks in order here, but it might help to get out of the car and take a look. You seen anything? Hmm. No dog here? Not even any sign of her. Did you know that penguins are considered the gods of the sea? Dave and I want to believe you so badly. Um. Oh. 
So she wasn't there? The cul-de-sac again, I guess? We are at the cul-de-sac to find everything looking normal except... Uh-oh. Hugo's front door is wide open. She could open doors? This is classic Duchess Cordelia. A telltale sign. We should approach with, with caution. Whatever goes down in there. I got your back. We go up to the porch and step inside. Oh, she's so cute! There is sitting inside of Hugo's living room. She actually owns the damn place. One of the biggest dogs I've ever seen. Woof! Well, she hasn't broken anything in here. Yet. Huh. Wonderful. All we have to do is get a leash on her before she tries to escape again and get out of here before Hugo comes home. Easy peasy. Duchess, come here. The Duchess eyes David Morley as he approaches, she begins to growl. She's on her guard. We need another plan. Um... Don't we... Oh, we have the banana bread, right? We can give her... Ooh. Let's give the banana bread first. Yes! Reach in my pocket and pull out the slice of ripe type banana bread Matt gave me. So she sniffs the air and hones it on the bread. Come here, girl. Nice and easy. I got some yummy homemade vegan and possibly groom-free banana bread, if that's what you're into. Uh, the Duchess cautiously approaches me and gives him the bread a good sniff before taking it from my hand and dropping it to the ground, like dogs always do for some reason. She curls up and starts munching on the bread. Success! Oh, they're so cute together! Damien walks up behind Duchess and touches the leash to her collar. She immediately notices and starts whining. Oh. It's time to go home now, Duchess. Damien gives her tongue on the leash. She won't move. Hmm. Duchess, what happened to her rapport? You and I used to be so bosom buzzies. She doesn't see those move. She's huge. There's no way we could even lift her. Um, well, this is a weird situation to be in. I think we later trespassing your friend's house with this large dog. What are you nerds doing here? Ernest stands in the doorway with a plate of pizza rolls. Uh. <laughs> what your pizza rolls are those? Uh. Pepperoni blast. Nice. Dutch just notices Ernest that's pulling against the leash. Why is the dog in my house? It's a long. The Dutch just suddenly breaks free from Damien's grip and hurdles towards Ernest. Ernest and Duchess fall to the ground. Pizza rolls everywhere. This is bad. Ernest, are you okay? Ernest feeds the dog Duchess peaches roll. Hey, she likes the pizza rolls. Ernest sits up and the dog keeps licking his face. Oh. Hey. Hugo stands at the doorway. Looks like he's at a loss for words. Huh? What? Why are you guys... Whose dog is this? It's a long story, but it involves a large dog who knows how to open doors. Boof! Hugo, may I present you Duchess Cordelia? How do you do? Oof. We're friends! Dutch just looks at Ernest's face. <laughs> I love Ernest, he's so cute. I think out of everyone, I think Hugo or Craig are my favourite, but them two together are definitely my fave. She's from the local animal shelter. She got out, we've been chasing her all around town. Ah. Your house was her final stop. Dad, can we keep her? Eh. Ernest, I don't know if we're still to take care of her. Whoa. Wait, do you just call me Dad? Come on, please! Look how cute she is! Hugo sighs. Oh. We've been talking about adopting a dog for a while. But you have to promise me you take care of her. Yeah! I'll give her all the peace rolls her little heart desires! So I remember what's on the back of this map and put out a pen out of my pocket. Got the forms ready for you if you're interested. Oh. I'll even waive the adoption fee since, you know, we technically broke into your house. Mm. Well, alright, it's a deal. Hugo steps into the porch with us and signs the form while Ernest plays with the Duchess inside. They got a puppy! He sure seems to be happy with his new friend. Yes. I know. And he called me dad. Can you believe that? Then he places the hand on Hugo's shoulder. Oh. I certainly can. I think this will be really good for Ernest. It should teach him some responsibility. You should probably look into getting better locks on your doors though. The Duchess is a wily one. But do right by her and she'll love you two forever. Thank you. I think he's delighted now that Ernest and him are kind of getting a little bit closer. And long story short, the Duchess now lives in a happy home and everyone's charged for breaking and entering. So all in all, it was a fine day's work. Nice work, you two. Delphron, you could be a valuable asset to our team of volunteers, you know. If you ever feel like petting some puppies, hit me up. Mary, I always feel like petting puppies. Good to know. Well, I'll catch you fellas later. Mary starts to leave. And one last thing. Damien's been telling me all about you. Glad he finally brought you around. Oh, yeah. Damien's my special buy. I love him. We go way back and I got a vested interest in his health, success, and well-being. If you ever heard... Mary is like... She's like all over these dads. Like, Robert, Joseph, Damien. Mary. You can fill in the blanks. I gulp. Yes, ma'am. Mary leaves me alone with Damien. So, about the whole goth thing. I, um... 
Completely understand if you aren't interested in me, in me anymore. What? Am I missing something here? I'm not a cool goth prince, I'm boring. I own five pairs of tennis shoes, I wear dumb glasses. Don't you care? He looks so nervous. Damien, do you really think you're lucky because of all the goth stuff? That's cool, but the best thing about you is how passionate you are about the things you love. History, art, Victorian fashion, dogs, storage solutions? Doesn't matter if you, what it is, you cared, and that's awesome. And also, the glasses are very cute. You don't think I'm boring? At all? If you're boring, then I don't know what that makes me. I spend too much time online shopping for flashlights. I get excited to mow my lawn on Saturdays, and I get cranky about commercials being too loud. I've even been thinking about making my own peanut butter. Huh. Then maybe we can be boring together? Mm, it would never be boring if it was with you, Damien! Ah! Damien suddenly closes the gap between us and pulls me into a hug. He buries his face on my shoulder. His hair smells like lavender and rosemary. I was so scared you wouldn't like me. Quite the opposite. Damien pulls away for a second and looks me in the eyes. Without the color context, his eyes are so dark and soulful. Oh. May I kiss you? Um... Del Arth, welcome! <laughs> Verily, you may think upon yourself that, you know what, just kiss me. He smiles slightly and leans in, giving me a gentle kiss. Dane pulls away and gives me an intense look. Do you want to help me take care of the puppies? Yes! Dave and I are right back at the cul sac, our fingers entwined. Like a proper gentleman, he walks me to the doorstep. Yeah. This was lovely. Thank you for understanding. Thank you for everything. I'm very happy I can be around myself. Be myself around you. I'm glad, but I have one request. What's that? Can we keep on sending each other letters? Yeah. But of course. Damien kisses me one last time before turning around and heading home. I can imagine us like four years or five years down the line and then like I send him a message like, what do you want for breakfast? <laughs> or something like that. Like in a little letter. Amanda returns from the couch from the window and tries to look as nonchalant as possible. Hello, father. I was sitting here on the couch the entire time. Hi, Amanda. <laughs> so, are you guys like starting a vampire coven together? Oh, please, plot twist. Mothman, Damien's actually a Mothman. I didn't see you coming either. Mm. Genius. Well, whatever's happening, I'm really glad you two are happy. You deserve it, Dad. Oh, shucks. I'm gonna head to bed. Catch you in the morning? Sure thing. Made my way to the room, fall asleep, my heart full and excited for the days to come. Alright guys, let's skip to the end. Here we are. Hey, Amanda's dad. I turn to spot Lucien walking up to me. Yes, Lucien? Thanks for inviting me to your party. Anytime, bud. I know we had a rocky start, but I'm glad to know you. I hope you know how much your dad cares about you. Um, yeah. My dad's had a rough couple of years, and I know that must not have been easy to raise me alone. He's kind of a weird guy, but I love him a lot, and it seems like you make him happy. So, you're cool in my book. Thank you, Lucian. That means a lot to me. Sure. And let me know if you want to give me your stick a poke sometime. If you, if you want me to give you a stick and poke sometime. What? Thanks for coming by, Lucian. See you around, Delphi. As the party starts going down, I take a seat back porch. Sun setting, everything's trying to fill. Oh yeah, we can skip this part. Ooh, there we go. Oh, he did it! He wore like this stuff. Take a seat next to Damien as Alaska's make their way out of the party. Did you know that in Victoria era, they would call benches seedy boys? What? Really? <laughs> I'm kidding, Delphron. What if? It's good to see you in your uh, civvies again. Thank you. I had a revelation the other day, Delphon. Ning was largely due to your continued influence upon me. There was a version of myself that might have been embarrassed to show you my true form. My information technology form. What you said about me, how my passion was what you truly admired, that emboldened me to feel myself regardless of how I choose to dress and act. Mm. Instead of separate entities, they are simply different facets of myself. A three-dimensional human being with his own thoughts, wants, and needs. I love dressing the way I do, but feeling constricted by what I thought was my own personal brand made me lose sight of what I did this in the first place to make myself happy. I place my hand in Damien's and feel a tight squeeze, and looking up, I was greeted by Damien's warm smile. <laughs> I'm trying to be more comfortable with who I am, rather than dwelling on who I could be to other people. I can't stop smiling, I'm so proud of him. Damien, I'm so happy you've realized that you can be a dog-loving god! Me too, Delphron. Me too. I feel myself inching closer and closer to Damien. I go to brush a lock of hair of his face, and I'm shocked at how soft it is. How? Is your hair so soft? Huh. Dog shampoo. I keep running my hands through his hair as he leans closer to me, placing a hand on the side of his face. He strokes my cheek with his thumb. <clears throat> you know, most ladies of reflection were considered scandalous in the Victorian era. Dean pulls me in for a kiss, but I think I can make an exception for you. 
Oh, that's so sweet! Oh, wow! <laughs> Alright, Damien! Uh, pay me like one of your goth girls. Okay, thank you guys so much for watching. Remember, leave down in the comment section if you want me to um, date Matt and date Brian if you want to see those final endings on my channel. Alright guys, bye!